You and I have talked before about the British pretense of short-term, medium-term, long-term. Now we've got a transitory thing as we move along the x-axis in the timeline. Does any of this make theoretical sense, or are we just kidding ourselves, massaging the unknown? Well, the Fed is being patient for some, a couple of very obvious reasons. Number one, uh, they're not really sure where full employment is. Number two, they're not sure how fast inflation will rise once they get to full employment. And so they're willing, and number three, they're worried about inflation be expectations becoming unanchored to the downside because the Fed hasn't been able to achieve this 2% inflation objective for a long time. So the change in policy is well motivated. The risk is that the Fed will be late. Uh, before the Fed basically tried to tighten monetary policy to arrive at a 2% inflation rate, full employment, and a neutral monetary policy all at the same time. Now they're not even going to start to tighten monetary policy until they're at full employment, inflation's at 2%, and they expect inflation to move higher. So the Fed's going to be much slower to tighten this regime than in prior regimes, and that does create some risk for the economy. But we say it's a risk that they'll be late. Isn't it a commitment that they're going to be late? Well, the question is how late. Uh, yes, I think they are, they, are, they are making a commitment that they're going to be late. The question is really how late, and then how high will they have to raise short-term rates to basically keep inflation from continuing to accelerate? Now, the risk is, I think, that the, ri the risk is that recession will be uh, uh, more, more likely at that point because the Fed's going to have to move not to a neutral monetary policy but to a tight monetary policy if they're following this new uh, framework. So, Bill, this is a huge issue, and I think the most important question we can ask right now of Fed officials, and we asked it of Vice Chair Clarida on Friday, is how will they know if they're wrong on this transitory issue? If you were on the FOMC, back on the FOMC, Bill, how would you know if you were wrong? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, I think they, they, they're going to look at the bubble that we're going to see in inflation this year as mostly due to base effects and some frictional costs as you sort of reopen the economy. They're going to be really focusing more on the labor market. How many people are still unemployed compared to where we were in March of 2020? Right now, we have a shortfall of employment of about eight and a half, nine million people, and the Fed's going to be tracking that very carefully. As those people get employed, then the Fed will start to not focus on the transitory factors driving inflation up, but really the one that they are most concerned about is what, at what point do you get to such a tight labor market that it generates wage pressures that drive up prices?